everybody. My name is Britt Eisenberg. I'm with the Gettysburg Foundation. I'm here with Chief of Interpretation Chris Gwynn for the National Park Service. And we're here to bring you another episode of Faces on the Front Line. Uh, today, we want to talk about uh, probably the most famous site in all of American Civil War history. Uh, we're here, of course, at Little Round Top. It's hard to believe there's anything that hasn't been covered on this hill. Um, but one thing I've found interesting over the years, Chris, as I've been doing tours here, is that there are still some unsung heroes mm -hmm. that might not get the um, attention of, of some of the, their more famous neighbors. So uh, what we'd like to do is talk about some of those individuals today. And Chris, I'm just going to turn over to you. Is there anybody in specific you'd like to mention off the bat here? Well, that's a great question, Britt. And, you know, I think, as, as you mentioned, Little Round Tops, possibly one of the most studied autopsy detailed aspect of the Battle of Gettysburg and of course as you mentioned there are many famous individuals associated with the fighting here on July 2nd 1863 and our mind goes to individuals like Governor Warren perhaps and, and most certainly Joshua Chamberlain commander of the 20th Maine who's then immortalized in in literature and in film through the Killer Angels in the movie Gettysburg. Missing in that equation often though is a colonel from Erie, Pennsylvania, whose name is Strong Vincent. Mm -hmm. And Strong Vincent, not only will he be the individual who takes the initiative to lead his brigade of 1,300 Union soldiers to the hill, uh, he'll be mortally wounded on the crest of the hill uh, that afternoon. And so truly, he is one of the unsung heroes of the Battle of Little Round Top, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And when you come to a place like Little Round Top, a lot of times the, the, the landscape of the hill, the memorial features, they tend to, um, to convey certain individuals in a very heroic light. So if you were to go to Little Round Top today, uh, on the northern end of the hill, there's the, the bronze statue of Governor Warren. It looks very heroic, looking off in the distance towards the approaching uh, Confederates. Or perhaps you might go and visit the bust of Patrick O'Rourke, who's, uh, who's very famous. Vincent doesn't have any of that. Uh, he doesn't even have a road or an avenue named after him. A lot of times in the 1890s and early 1900s, the United States War Department would name roads or park avenues after specific individuals. So if you were to travel to Little Round Top today, you might drive up Warren Avenue and onto Sykes Avenue. Sykes, of course, is George Sykes, commander of the Fifth Army Corps. Or you may hike along the recently rehabilitated Chamberlain Avenue, but nowhere, Britt, will you find a Vincent Avenue. Well, that's disappointing, Chris. It is so, disappointing. So unless you're from Erie, Pennsylvania, standing in front of the library downtown, you you might not have ever heard of this individual. You're gonna, you're gonna have a tough time. You're okay. gonna have a tough time, Britt. Now, I, the, the ironic part of that is Strong Vincent, who's a young guy, by the way, Britt, he's in his mid-20s. And in my mind, Vincent is the epitome of this, this concept of a citizen soldier. Mm -hmm. This is not an individual who, growing up as a young kid in Erie, Pennsylvania, necessarily wanted to devote his life to a military career. So he doesn't go to the United States Military Academy at West Point. He's actually an, an Ivy League graduate. He goes to to Harvard. He's a lawyer by trade, but when his country needs him, when the rebellion occurs, when Lincoln's call for volunteers to join the Union cause is, is issued, Vincent will leave those things behind, dedicate himself to the cause of the Union, and through the first two years of the American Civil War, will fight in some of the most horrific battles of the, the Eastern Theater, uh, from the Virginia Peninsula all the way up up to Gettysburg here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be here that he would briefly kind of immortalize himself. Because as I mentioned earlier, uh, when Warren issues the call for volunteers to rush to the summit to defend Little Round Top, Vincent actually doesn't have orders to do that. He intercepts a courier and realizing the, the momentous import of the occasion, takes the initiative to lead his brigade there directly. So he doesn't go through the chain of command. Mm -hmm. He acts upon his own initiatives. And Vincent just happened to be a very good soldier. He understood uh, the lay of the land, he understood ground, and he positions his brigade very effectively. At a critical moment, as the right of his brigade line is being driven back by Confederates from Alabama and Texas, Vincent, uh, with the very weight of his body, would rush over to this end of the hill, waving a riding crop in the air, shouting out to his men, don't give an inch when he's mortally wounded by a Confederate bullet. Some of the first monuments on this battlefield, uh, everything from rock carvings to some early tablets will actually be for Vincent. Mm -hmm. So initially, he's very much lionized as one of the heroes of Little Round Top. But over time, as other veterans tell their story, as other individuals are propped up, Vincent is forgotten about, to a degree anyways which is unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, I mean, on that note, I would say, number one, thank you very much, Chris, for sharing a little bit about uh, Strong Vincent. But also, folks, if you haven't been out here since the uh, hill has opened back up to the public, 
we'd invite you to come on out here. And Chris, how can people explore Strong Vincent's story specifically if they want to if they want to come out here to Little Round Town? Oh, absolutely. So what I would suggest everyone does is drive up to the uh, newly rehabilitated parking area at the summit of Little Round Top off of Sykes Avenue. Uh, you'll find hopefully ample parking here at the summit. We have a new system of trails that'll take you around the hill, including to areas where Vincent positioned his brigade. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of new interpretive panels that tell Vincent's story. And our hope is that when you walk these trails, when you read these interpretive panels, if you hire your licensed battlefield guide, uh, or if you go out with a ranger, you're gonna get a much fuller appreciation of the story of the fighting up here at Little Round Top, a iconic place, not just in United States history and in Civil War history, but an iconic location in the state of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And Vincent being from Pennsylvania, fighting and dying for the, the preservation of the Union uh, on the soil of his home state, I think is an incredibly powerful thing. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks so much, Chris, and thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned for the next episode of Faces on the Front Lines. Thank you.